What's up guys, Toy House here, and I am so hyped to get this video out for you guys. Today we're going to talk about TBC pre-patch leveling. It is so awesome. I can't wait to show you guys some of the different things that have taken place in patch 2.3 as well as to patch 2.4.3. Two really big patches that we're going to see in this pre-patch leveling implemented. So I'm going to talk about three things in this video. Feel free to skip around. We're going to talk about gear changes and tips so you can take advantage of those gear changes. There's quite a lot. Leveling improvements. Some of you may be familiar with this, but if you aren't, this could be helpful for determining your style of leveling, whether that's XP, uh, grinding, quest grinding, or dungeon farming. And number three, things you can buy to prepare. And there's quite a few. Uh, and I will go through all of that starting right now. So now let's talk about gear changes and tips to take advantage. So the biggest thing is that all old world dungeons have had their loot revisited. So players will now find that all loot dropped inside instances will be of superior or blue quality. Now this is awesome. Everything that used to drop that was a green item from bosses uh, will now be blue items. And that doesn't just mean it's going to be uh, changing the color of the text, right? The item itself is actually going to be better. Let's look at some of these examples. Uh, Belt of the Fang. You can see it here that it's green. These are the stats and boom. Now here's the blue version. And that's for all of the green items. Um, Robo of Evocation. Let's take a look at the green version and let's take a look at the blue version. Amazing, right? It's it's pretty solid improvement. Uh, Smite's Reaver, blue version and or sorry green version now blue version and uh in my personal favorite robes of arugal uh and you can see the green version here and now the blue version here and what's really interesting is that in my opinion robes of arugal the change is actually a nerf for spirit stacking priests in my opinion i leveled a priest fairly recently up to 60 and i was stacking spirit like it was the only stat that mattered and i had pretty much zero downtime let me tell you I think it was the fastest character I leveled to 60, I'm not going to lie. So I actually think Robes of Arugal, uh, if, if you're a priest, not as good. If you're any other, uh, you know, caster, I think they're even better now for you. All right, so that's a big change. Definitely going to probably ch uh, change your leveling plan to maybe lean towards doing more dungeons now because of uh, this change. Uh, now that dungeon gear is all better. Uh, any, any of those greens. Now, the second thing I want to talk about that has to do with gear changes and tips is that low-level cloth items uh, have been changed. Uh, low-level meaning not max-level cloth items. So all agility and strength on low-level cloth items has been replaced with another stat, usually bonus spell damage, but also sometimes other stats beneficial to mana users. Unbelievable, right? So um, I remember doing this super annoying quest. I had to go all the way from uh, Dustwallow Marsh, all the way to Swamp of Sorrows, all the way to the east coast of Swamp of Sorrows, as an alliance character, mind you, um, to gather uh, crawler legs, pristine crawler legs, right? And then I went all the way back to Dustwallow Marsh, and I turned them in, and I remember my reward was the Baroque Apron. It's a green uh, chest piece that's loaded with strength. It's a cloth item, just loaded with strength. And I'm like, what, what the, what? kind of reward is this i can't even use this and so um it's been changed so here you can see the green version and let's look at well obviously they're both green but look at the improvement look at this so much better now it has actually some bonus spell damage so that's uh, one example now there's another one that i actually bought the recipe for this is the white bandit mask this is a cloth helmet requires uh, you know, i think a level 38 or so easily craftable mind you easily craftable uh typically this is a, a an item you'd craft uh to level up your disenchanting just because it's so easy to craft um but even if you want to like gold make a lot of gold you craft it disenchant it sell the disenchanting mats um it now actually has some it's actually practical i mean it used to have strength and now it has bonus spell damage so just a few examples of these random items where you look at them as a caster and you're like wtf why does this even exist blizzard why does it even exist <laughs> So they've been fixed, which is awesome for casters. Speaking of casters, I have one very big tip for you in your leveling journey. Uh, kind of a basic tip, but one very important nonetheless. 
If you are leveling a fresh spellcaster character, I highly recommend the spellcaster wands, either lesser magic wand. Actually, no, no, either. You need to get lesser magic wand. And then after that, you need to get greater magic wand. I've leveled warlocks, made well, warlocks and priests and just it's just so strong to have a good wand early on. I mean, once you get that lesser, lesser magic wand at level six, it's going to speed. You're going to stop casting spells. You're just going to wand stuff down. It really helps if you're a priest. You can just dot and wand. If you're a warlock, dot and wand. Honestly, I haven't leveled a mage, so I don't know how they would do it. But I guarantee having that wand is going to be helpful. It's so good. They're incredible. I highly recommend you pick up those wands. It's going to make leveling so much better. Now, the final tip that I have to help your leveling experience in terms of gear changes uh, is that the Ghostlands Elite Quests, uh, at least qu Elite Quest for your blue weapon. Now, if you're not familiar, I made a video saying don't skip this quest, but with the addition of pre-patch, we're going to have Blood Elves, and that means we're going to have Ghostlands. And Ghostlands is going to introduce the quest to get your blue weapon. There's a... Um, I think it's around level, I want to say 20 or so. Uh, you can, you, you'll can you need a group. Uh, you have to kill Darkon, and he basically drops four items, or doesn't drop, but the quest to, de to defeat him will reward you with four blue items. They're so good for their level. You get a two-handed sword that has plus 10 strength, huge. You have ridiculous DPS blue bow. Everyone's going to be asking you, where did you get it? Happened to me. People are like, yo, your bow is crazy. Where'd you get it? You'll get that. And then there's like an amazing staff loaded with intelligence. Um, and then you also have a dagger, which is perfect for rogues. So you have those four weapons. Unfortunately, there isn't something for everyone. So there's only a dagger, a staff, a bow, and a, and a sword, right? A two-handed sword. So keep that in mind. It's not for everyone, but most classes can find value. I mean, the staff covers pretty much all casters. I would even say druids could pick that up. And then um, you got the bow for hunters, you got the dagger for rogues, and you got the, the two-handed sword for warriors and paladins. So don't skip that quest. It's extremely worth doing. And I'm sure most people will uh, be doing it, so you won't have too hard of a time uh, finding a group. All right, let's move on to the second part, leveling improvements. And this is in the patch notes, of course, so if you already know the improvements that were made, feel free to skip. But the level ranges of pre-Burning Crusade dungeons have been adjusted to a narrower range. Now, see, this is new to me. I didn't, I didn't even know this was a thing. For example, Shadowfang Keep is currently designed in Classic right now for levels 18 to 25, which means that right now, players who are towards the bottom of that range, level 18, are going to find it very difficult to complete the dungeon uh, because, um, you know, at near the end of the dungeon, you're going to have mobs that are level 25, right? Well, players toward the top of the range, level 25, will find pretty much most of the dungeon uh, useless, right? You, everything's too low level. So they, they're implementing this new model, of course, uh, and you'll see this with Burning Crusade dungeon design as well. But Shadowfang came, Keep is now narrowed for levels 18 to 21. So you're not going to see mobs level 22, or sorry, you're not going to see mobs that, you know, you'd have to be level 25 uh, in order to have them be yellow to you. So this is basically meaning that dungeons are, uh, I would say, easier, right? Like, you're going to, they're, they're much more, like, um, specific to certain level ranges, which is awesome. Um, so Shadowfang Cape, for example, is now 18 to 21, and they wouldn't be for 18 to 25, that really large range anyways. So another improvement to dungeons, if you're following the trend like I am, it, in my mind, there's an alarm going off saying, do dungeons when you're leveling, do lots of dungeons, because you're going to have improved items, the dungeons are going to be more uh, catered to a certain level, uh, the gear is improved significantly, um, and... Here's another one. The amount of uh, dungeon quests have had their experience and faction rewards increased through 1, th 1 through 60. So any type of dungeon quests, you're going to be getting more XP from them previously. Fantastic. Now here's uh, a, an interesting thing. The amount of experience granted by quests has been increased between levels 30 and 60. So hypothetically, you could leverage perhaps boosting from levels 1 to 30. Um, you know, the experience granted from quest only kicks in at level 30. So if you really want to min max, perhaps you want to get boosted from levels, I don't know, uh, 13 or around there until uh, 30 and then start questing because there's no quest boost experience until level 30. So uh, keep that in mind. And speaking of level 30, 
Don't forget that you can learn to ride your mount at level 30. Another huge improvement, having a mount, of course, will get you a crazy amount of increase in terms of leveling speed. Um, if you're a paladin, you just learn it at your trainer. It's basically less than a gold. And the final change to leveling improvements is Duswalla Marsh. Over 50 new quests and a new neutral goblin town called Mudsprocket with a flight path is located in the southern part of the zone. And there's also a quest hub uh, next to the crashed uh, goblin zeppelin. Actually, you had to pick up two parcels, I remember, um, packages for different quests in Classic for that zeppelin. So most of you, if you did those quests, know what I'm talking about with that crashed zeppelin. There's also a small questing hub there now. All right, and the final part of leveling improvements is just that many elite creatures and quests, uh, level 1 through 60, are now non-elites to accommodate solo play. Um, I'm sure you all are probably aware of that one. Um, and, I, and also, elites outside of dungeons uh, have been changed to non-elite as well. So it's easier to get to the entrance of dungeons now without having to battle uh, elite mobs. This makes certain quests easier, like 99-year-old port, for example, um, th in, in Wailing Caverns, for example. Okay, now the final part of this is things you can buy to prepare. Now, there's a lot of quest items that aren't actually quest items. They're just items you can buy in the auction house. I was actually browsing and I saw a comment from Froderick1334 and he listed out all of the items that he had actually purchased uh, to prepare for uh, leveling in pre-patch. So I'm going to post this in uh, the comment section below. This is for Alliance. You, um, the obvious one are the different uh, cloths you can do for donations. For example, level 12, 300 wool cloth for uh, all the different capitals. Now you might be wondering, 300? I thought it was 260 Toy House. Aha, but now with Drenai, there's another capital city, or Blood Elves if you're Horde. Uh, you can donate to them as well. So that's going to bring up the total you need to 300. So 300 wool cloth, 300 um, you know, rune cloth, silk cloth, uh, etc. At, um, just listing out a few of these, Red Ridge, Red Ridge Goulash, right? You can buy the Gore Tusk Snouts. You can buy the Condor Meat. Uh, dusky, crab dusky Crab Cakes. Say that six times really fast. Uh, you, need, you can buy the, the Gooey Spider Legs and so on. So there's a bunch of different things. Of course, the Lesser Bloodstone Ore for favor for Krasik. I could go on. There's a bunch. But I'm going to list those out in the comment section below to help you. Hopefully, this is helpful for you guys. I really think that in pre-patch, it's going to be way worth your time to do a lot of dungeons. I think they've really improved the gear. They've improved the experience. They've improved um, basically the dungeon itself by making it more narrow. I think doing lots of dungeons is your way to go in uh, pre-patch and in TBC moving forward um, with with all these changes. So hope this video was helpful helpful for you guys. Uh, if you liked it, don't forget to don't forget to give it a like. If you guys want more World of Warcraft content, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.